Michigan and Trumbull, where Tiger Stadium, of course, once stood, being transformed right now. A four-story building is going up for stores and apartments, but as Nick Monticelli reports, workers are using a unique construction style that's never been used in the city of Detroit before. So I know you heard that they are completely and entirely done. That's almost the case, except for the hallway. The elevator would be over here. This would be the common area. All everything is obviously exposed on the outside. It's the inside that is totally done. The appliances, the kitchen, the flooring, the drywall, the electrical, everything is ready for you just to move on in. This is a very unique project. A unique project for a unique corner in Detroit history. What used to be Tiger Stadium is now a ballpark for kids. And what used to be the stands will soon be stores and homes. It's the homes making headlines today because they are already done, just waiting to be dropped into place. And the first one was lifted and found its new home this morning. Right, so you're either going to be looking down on this historic Michigan Avenue, which now is being transformed into this automation alley with the Ford announcement, um, and or into the ballpark. Eric Larson is leading the corner project and opted for this modular construction because they could cut the timeline by six months. You don't really save a tremendous amount in actual cost. The dollar per square foot construction cost is about the same, but you save a lot in terms of the, the ability to move fast. In fact, by the end of this month, you will see four stories of this building. The apartments themselves are built off-site in a warehouse by Champion Home Builders out of Troy. They're essentially plug and play. Just drop them in and connect the utilities. We are just essentially faster because we're doing it in an assembly line fashion off site in a factory, undercover away from the elements. There will be a total of 111 of these, ranging from studio apartments to two bedroom units. Rent is going to start around $1,100 a month. About 20 of the units will be set aside as affordable housing. In Corktown, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. And the entire project expected to be done in February. Well, we know every minute counts when it comes to a 911 response. So imagine an entire police department losing connection to its 911 service for 12 hours. Well, that's what happened in the small city of Richmond a week ago when their landlines were interrupted. Local force Coco McAvoy explains how this was a miscommunication between DTE and another company. This building is pretty nondescript and at first glance it might even seem abandoned to some people, but about a week ago, the city of Richmond learned just how important this building is. Richmond Police and Fire, this is Linda. The number of 911 calls to the Richmond Police Department vary depending on the day. You might have days where there's just a few calls, you have other days where it's kind of ringing off the hook. But on September 11th, we were having problems with our 911 lines. Chief David Teske says the entire city of Richmond lost cell service, meaning no calls in or out to the police department. You don't realize how much you rely on your cell phones and your landlines until they go down. So how did this happen? It has a lot to do with this frontier switch station down the road. Everything gets routed through there, obviously all our landlines. DTE had been sending several letters calling and visiting the station to install a new meter. But there's one problem. No one answers it because it's basically just a service building. So DTE cut power to the building. I don't know if they realize that in fact how important that switch station is. The department had to use Macomb County's dispatch center as a backup for 12 hours. We were kind of uh, listening a little closer to the radios, obviously, because that's our only form of communication now uh, with the outside world. Now they're trying to get in touch with DTE to find out what's going on and see if we can somehow earmark that building. It's the only way to make sure the Richmond 911 call service doesn't get interrupted again. And we did reach out to DTE and they said they would never intentionally cut service to a building that houses 911 communications. And they did release a statement that reads, quote, in part, this location was not flagged in our system as one that provides a critical service. As soon as it was brought to our attention, we worked with the city to restore power as well as upgrade the meter. And we will have the full statement from DTE on our website at clickondetroit.com. Back to you. So Coco, who's responsible for flagging the building in this case? 
So I asked DTE that question and they say that the customer is responsible for flagging the building. And so in this case, that would be Frontier Communications was responsible for flagging that business to make sure that DTE knew that it provided a critical service. But now DTE says it is resolved and they're working with Frontier to determine where they should send mail in the future. Yeah. All right, Coco. Still to come, an eyesore no more. We're going to show you what now stands in place of this abandoned former strip club. And gun control remains a divisive issue in America. But what about ammunition control? A local county commissioner has an idea, and for him, it's personal. That's next. This is the moment yes. when America crowns a star. Everybody ready? The Got Talent season finale live. This stage makes you or breaks you. AGT live from Hollywood, tonight and tomorrow on NBC. Every morning is totally nuts around here. I never know what I'll feel bad about, but I know it's always just around the corner. I thought you were your mother. And there it is. I Feel Bad, special preview Wednesday on NBC. Michigan has made a comeback. So why would we turn back now? Michigan can't afford to go back to the failed policies of Jennifer Granholm and Gretchen Whitmer. Whitmer helped pass Granholm's tax increases, contributing to half a million jobs lost and 15% unemployment. Now Whitmer wants to raise taxes even more. Gretchen Whitmer is just like Jennifer Granholm, and Michigan can't afford to lose another decade. Wall side windows, 15 days only. Get every second window free, plus an extra 15% off for cash. Order today. We're offering new exterior colors, including black. Get flex screens free. Every second window free, plus an extra 15% off or 60 months no interest. No down payment. 15 days only, only from Wallside. We can do that. We are the factory. Call 1-800-521-7800. Welcome. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. There are cars. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. GM employees with a current GM lease can get this Chevy Malibu for $169 a month. Chevy drives the Motor City. Find new roads. When it comes to national security, we've got to play it straight. Attacking illicit slot gun with video taken out of context is deceitful and wrong. She's dedicated her life to keeping America safe. I served alongside Alyssa in the White House under both Republican and Democratic presidents, and she always spoke truth to power, doing what's right for country, not party. We need more of that in Congress. I'm Alyssa Slotkin, and I'm proud to approve this message. Closed captioning for this program is brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm. We focus intensely on doing the big and small things right for our clients. The guiding principle of our work is that we always put the client first. New at 6. Staring down the barrel of a gun, a gas station clerk's life flashes before his eyes. What community? these shameless suspects terrorized. It started as a quiet steak dinner at a popular restaurant and ended in a medical emergency. You won't believe what this man says he bit into. What was hidden in that steak? This has caused severe pain. It's obviously shock. I just want justice. Now you'll see how the restaurant is responding to this man's claims. A Wayne County Commissioner is pushing for change when it comes to buying ammunition. Reggie Davis calls it the bullet bill, and he thinks it could become a model for the entire nation. As Local 4's Larry Spurl discovered for the county commissioner and others in attendance today, this is deeply personal. We met Commissioner Davis here at the cemetery because he tells me that his family has been touched by gun violence. He also says this is a very personal issue for him. This is my brother, Vito, gun violence. And this is my cousin, also gun violence. Here at Woodlawn Cemetery is where Commissioner Reggie Davis tells me he feels closest to his brother and uncle. They were both shot and killed here in Detroit. Detroit is 
the Wild Wild West. That's why he's introducing the bullet bill. It's a proposal that limits the purchase of ammunition in Wayne County. It's three phases to his proposal. The first is to require a mental health background check on people who buy ammunition in Wayne County. Here's the second part. When we talk about putting the, uh, the taxes on the ammunition, that's a, a start. And the final one. I say that you can't purchase a bullet unless you go to the Detroit Police Department, Wayne County Sheriff's Office, or St Michigan State Police. But Davis is not alone. Tuesday, two mothers stood by his side. They have both lost their sons to gun violence. My son was murdered on July 29th, 2015. He was shot with an assault rifle. AK in the back and in his leg. We're not supposed to bury our kids. Not like that. Not like that. Now I asked Davis how would he pay for this bill. He tells me additional county taxes would be imposed on the purchase of ammo. That money would go to cover administrative costs, assist victims of gun violence, and educational programs with a focus on conflict resolution. And I did reach out to Chief Craig's office, several city council members, and the Mayor Duggan's office. I have not heard back just yet. Meanwhile, he tells me that he plans on presenting this proposal to the commissioners on October the 4th. We're live on the West Side tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry. Former Congressman John Dingell remains under observation tonight after suffering a heart attack. He spoke with his wife, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, earlier. She says doctors are conducting tests to determine if a catheterization will be done on his heart. The 92-year-old was admitted to Henry Ford Hospital yesterday morning, but she says he remains in good spirits and has really been itching to use his Twitter account, mm -hmm. which, of course, has become legendary. Hey, we all look forward Twitter to followers. seeing what he exactly what he right. We're wishing him the best. Yeah. Oh, well, let's check in with Ben. How we were just talking about how hot it yeah. was today. You were so with it us did over get there up to Cass. 90. Yeah, it was, it was steamy, especially in the city uh, where we did hit 90 degrees. Uh, the thunderstorms that we've been watching on the radar out to the west have kind of fallen apart, but uh, we've just seen a couple of those form south of a cold front, mainly in our south zone, and those are continuing to move off to the south and east. So we probably won't see much more of those uh, here in the next couple hours. Uh, what we will see more of in the short term is dry air, and it's hanging out in the northern end of the state right now. Dew points already down into the mid 50s here in Traverse City and Alpena, but we are still muggy, even though that cold front lies pretty much half way through the area, uh, the muggies are still hanging out even uh, in some of the uh, north zone uh, where your temperatures today uh, barely got out of the 70s. We hit 90 officially at Metro Airport and that put us within two degrees of a record high today, which was set back in 1955, well over the average, which is 73. And even though we are this warm, we're going to be below this number for the upcoming weekend. So quite a dramatic switch in temperatures as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Getting the cold front through here tonight will take the humidity with it. Uh, a very slow process through the night. We'll notice a difference tomorrow morning. A lot of these clouds are going to stay just that, even though the model has a couple green blips on there. We think we're going to stay dry. So don't think we're going to see much in the way of fog tomorrow morning. Eventually, we will break those clouds tomorrow afternoon. That will give us some sunshine, but temperatures tomorrow only in the mid 70s. That same front, though, that's going south of us tomorrow. It's coming back as a warm front on Thursday, so it's bringing back the humidity and back the heat. Although I don't think we're going to get to 90, we will return to the mid 80s for highs, likely feeling like the upper 80s at times with that higher level of humidity and a shower or thunderstorm not out of the question on Thursday. Some of those have the potential to become severe 62 tonight uh, and any thunderstorm that we see is going to fade pretty quickly as the sun goes down. Here are the high temperatures tomorrow. Quite a dramatic change from what we had today and in some cases almost 20 degrees cooler than what we had today. 72 in the city. We'll call it officially 75 at the airport, but our south zone is going to see a lot of low 70s here, and there will be some 60s for highs tomorrow as well. Not necessarily in our west zone where we're looking for low to mid 70s, but up here in Santa Lac, St. Clair County, you could be in the 60s for high temperatures tomorrow, and everybody's going to be there come this weekend. Saturday and Sunday, mid to upper 60s for highs as fall rolls in and the temperatures tumble. Morning lows will be in the 50s. And that Sunday morning 52 is going to be in the city, so I would not be surprised if we get some 40s <laughs> for lows on Sunday morning. Eventually, this is the course we'll, of events. We'll there. We're heading there. Yeah. Right. Well, most of us gotten used to receiving robocalls on our cell phones. You might be surprised to learn just how many you've actually been getting if you haven't been keeping track. That's coming up in Help Me Hank's Consumer Headlines.
Plus, one of the people imprisoned in her kidnapping is going free. But Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart has been promised something to help ease her concerns about that. We'll tell you what it is coming up. This program is sponsored by Art Van Furniture. How do you stand up for Michigan? Ask Kaylee Stevens. She helped lead the task force in charge of the auto rescue that saved 200,000 Michigan jobs. And Haley Stevens created the country's first online certification program for high-tech digital manufacturing. Now she's running for Congress to keep fighting for Michigan and make sure no one's denied insurance coverage over a pre-existing condition. Haley Stevens, she'll stand up for us. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. 1-800-HANSENS announces fall savings days. Now, when you install our new siding that's five times stronger than standard siding, we will also install our energy-saving installation absolutely free. Plus, you'll make no payments and no interest till fall 2019. Start saving on your heating and cooling bills right now with our free energy-saving installation. Call today. 1-800-HANSENS. Better siding, better prices. What makes Aldi olive oil so good? Oh, sweetheart. Because only the specialist, most amazing products in all the world make it in Aldi stores. Something so beautiful and precious you should never, ever, 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 ever let go of. Jeez, Mom, it's just olive oil. Stop being weird. We handpick only the most amazing products. That's changing shopping for the better. Aldi. Shop differently. This is a story about my mom, but it could be about anyone's mom. She had survived breast cancer when I was very young, but her pre-existing condition hung over all of us when we lived here at the farm. I'm Alyssa Slotkin, and years later, my mom lost her job, so she lost her health insurance and couldn't afford the premiums. And that's when she was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. I took a leave from the CIA so I could come home to take care of her. And Dave and I rushed our wedding at the farm so she could see it. Seeing the love between the two of you is the thing that got me through the terrible months in the hospital. That was one of her last really good days. So when I saw Congressman Bishop smiling at the White House after voting to gut protections for pre-existing conditions, something inside me broke. I'm running for Congress and I approve this message because Mr. Bishop, that's dereliction of duty and it's a fireable offense. Go for Frenzy! Yeah! Join the Frenzy. The game of the week is... Chippewa Valley at Macomb, Dakota. Watch highlights on Local 4 and click on Detroit. Presented by DMC's Children's Hospital of Michigan, Meyer, and your Southeast Michigan 4 dealers. Elizabeth Smart says she's been assured that the woman who helped kidnap her will be watched when she's released from prison. Smart was kidnapped and sexually assaulted when she was 14, and Wanda Barzee stood by as it all happened. Barzee was married to Brian David Mitchell when he kidnapped Smart, Smart back in 2002. Smart says she believes Barzee remains a danger. She's expected to be released from prison tomorrow after 15 years in custody, but Smart says she's been told a federal agent will be keeping a close eye on her. Tesla stock fell more than 6% after news came out that the company was reportedly under investigation. A criminal probe was started after CEO Elon Musk uh, tweeted about taking the company private. He tweeted that on August 7th that he was thinking about taking the company private and that he had the funding secured. Securities lawyers previously said his comments will likely draw fines from the SEC uh, for the company and exp not only the company in, in trouble, but it exposed Musk to possible criminal charges. Now to Lansing, Michigan officials have added an insect and a plant to the invasive species watch list. The Department of Natural Resources added the spotted lantern fly and the Japanese chaff flower to the list. The lantern fly is native to China. It sucks sap from the stems and leaves of more than 70 plants and crops. As for the Japanese chaff flower, it grows up to six feet high, displaces native plants by forming large, dense stands in floodplains, forested wetlands, and disturbed habitats.